God, we thank you this morning. Those of you that can stand as we go to God in prayer, we believe God, we know that he is more than able. Someone is even watching there at home or wherever you are. But God wants to meet your need. He says, I'm a God that's able to do the impossible. Is there anything too hard for me? It's not by might. God said it's not by power. He said it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And he's speaking to every one of us this morning. And God, we come to you. Yes, Lord, first of all, with thanksgiving. You said in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning every one of us. And oh God, we just say thank you. Thank you. It's good to come with a humble oh, heart, God. not aggressive, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh not abrasive, oh, yeah. but God, we come to you with a humble heart, and we say thank you, Lord. Thank You've been good to us all week. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Kept us through the night. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. you woke us up this morning. Yeah. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you. You've been good to us. And so we say thank you, Lord. Yeah. Better than we've been to ourselves. And we say thank you, Lord. And you are a good God. Hallelujah. Good shepherd. Oh, Lord, you're concerned about us. We're valuable to you. And we say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord. Thank you. It's good to say thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will move. Touch people live. Touch the mind. For your mind regulator. And so many people are losing their mind. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. But oh, God, touch. Touch that mind right now. Touch the heart of man. That boy, that girl. Yes, Lord, today you're able. Someone's almost falling into depression. But oh, God, you're the lifter of the soul. And you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so, God, we're saying, thank you, Lord, as we lift you up. And that highest praise is hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. to your name. Hallelujah. hallelujah, we honor you. Hallelujah, we glorify you. Hallelujah, you're the great I am. Hallelujah, yes, Lord. You're the beginning and the end. We say hallelujah because the angels cry hallelujah and yes lord we glorify you you are the rock today that we can stand on we say hallelujah thank you for salvation yes lord and we glorify you yes lord we just lift you up because you're worthy to be lifted up yes lord and we thank you that you're even Jehovah Rapha, the God that's able to heal us. What sickness do you have this morning? Whatever it is, God says, I can heal you. He said, will you believe me? Oh, Jesus said, have faith in God. And yes, Lord, whatever it is, you should touch yourself and say, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Tell yourself no more sickness. There's no more pain. Hallelujah. Because by your stripes, I am healed. And we say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Look on that person. Someone is just dried out from the night. And oh God, they're just sorry. And yes, Lord, but you're able to touch them right there where they are. And only you can bring us up out of a horrible pit. Oh God, and Maury Clay, you're able to establish our going, set our feet upon a rock. And so God, we say thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Someone is sick and tired of being sick and tired and don't want to tell nobody. 
but God you hear and you see that sick and tired God says I want to come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly yes Lord we thank you for you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think yes Lord so we say yes Lord we say yes Lord we say yes Lord our soul cries out yes Lord it's good to say yes Lord not our will but your will be done we say yes Lord not I but the Christ that lives in me yes Lord not I but it's you Lord Jesus yes Lord hallelujah I decrease as you increase yes Lord we say thank you come on and praise him come on and praise him he deserves the honor he deserves the glory and he is worthy he is worthy of all the praise and we just honor you Lord we believe you're going to meet us where we are today whatever it is whatever it is whatever it is God says bring it to me bring it to me it may even seem something strange but God said bring that strange thing to me I'm able to help you is it crooked he says I'm able to make the crooked straight in the name of Jesus 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 it's in the name of Jesus, that powerful name, that name that's able to change anything, that powerful name of Jesus. All authority is in the name of Jesus. Demon tremble at the name of Jesus. And so we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We believe by faith you're going to do it for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, come on, come on. Lift them up, lift them up, lift them up. We're going to have our scripture reading. Those of you will come in order, that order for our scripture reading, the Old and New Testament. Five and six, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in His word, my soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for morning. Yes, more than those who watch for morning. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of His word. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'll be reading to you this morning, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the appropriation for our sin. Beloved, 
if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen as God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. May God have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his Amen. word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, love. And we praise God. Today is our Father's Day. We're going to come with another selection. After that, we're going to be having our uh, supervisor designee, and she will greet us and those that are watching today. And let's just bless the Lord at this time. Get your mind on Jesus. Get your mind on Jesus. We're going to have a time. Get your mind on Jesus. We're going to have a time. I don't know what you come to do. 
what he's done for others, he will do for you. Amen. We truly give God the glory and honor on this morning, giving honor to our bishop, and Mother Nada, to all of the elders, pastors, members, saints, and friends. It is a blessing to be in the presence of, the God, of God one more time. It's a blessing to be in our service one more time. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But God said, get back, devil. Get back, devil. Hey, hey. You got to behave. Hallelujah. The, the Lord let me. The enemy can do nothing unless he allow him to. Hallelujah. And if I live right, he said he'll belong, I belong to him. And he will not withhold any good thing from me. Hallelujah. And I believe the word of God. I thank God for that are watching on uh, by Facebook, YouTube, and all of those different medias. We thank God for you all joining us on this morning. It's a blessing to have you with us this morning. And you know, saints, all I need to say today is hold on. Hold on. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the enemy try to throw in your way, you let him know that you're a child of God and you're going to hold on. Hallelujah. My daughter lives in Chicago. And I need to talk to Bishop about this. There's a festation of bugs all over Illinois. They come every 13 to 17 years. They, they migrate in the ground. They, they hatch their eggs, they drop to the ground, and they stay there for 13 to 17 years. Now there's a festation of those bugs. And they, I don't know if anybody heard that, but you know what, the, the, these are the last and evil days. And we don't know what's gonna come upon us, but we better be ready and know that we know that we know that we belong to God. Hallelujah, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't let the enemy destroy you. Don't let him talk to you and get him out of your ear. Let him know I'm not listening to nothing you've got to say. Turn off the tape and listen to what God has to say for you. Because there are better things waiting on you in the Lord. Amen. Saints, be encouraged and know that without God, we can do nothing. Without God, we will be a failure. But with God, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And I want you to know that the Lord loves you and I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. Amen. Well, today is Father's Day. Let's say Happy Father's Day. Y'all say it. Happy Father's Day. Amen. And we just praise God even as we uh, say Happy Father's Day to our shepherd, the angel of this house. Our pastor, Bishop Charles Nowden, we say happy Father's Day to you. <laughs> All right. We just praise God, and it's good. We need the fathers. The fathers are important. Yes, they are. And the scripture even lets them know they are very important, and they can play 
a very strategic part with their children and even with the wives first and then those children. God has set it up and his word even tells them what to do. Well, y'all going over there to Colossians 3. It'll tell you about the household. But God is so good and we're just so thankful today. Amen. My father has gone on uh, how many years ago, but I was glad to have my father. And uh, just remember when I was young, well, maybe he should have had a boy, but he liked to go fishing and he wanted me to go fishing with him. And I'm just like, this is not my gig, right? And so, but he just, we had to, and first of all, we started out with the worms. Well, I was having problems with them crawling worms. I just wanted to scream. And then, you can do it, baby, you can do it. Okay, right, okay, we got these worms. So now we're moving on, and now we're out there at Santa Monica Pier, and, and then when we, get the, when we get the fish home, and you would open, my grandma would open up the fish, now all those little baby fishes, and I said, see, this is a problem. I, I can't do this, I can't, you know. But anyways, I made it. I can sing that song, been through the storm and rain. Oh, but I made it. I went fishing and didn't like it. Oh, but I made it, you see? So here we are, happy Father's Day. And we thank God for the fathers. Yes, come on, amen, amen. And it's just good to be here. And so uh, today, our Bishop, our pastor, has a word for us, and God wants to bless us. God wants you to take these messages personal. Sometimes we're looking at it as somebody else, but God said it's for you. And so I believe that God has a word for every single one of us that are here. It's just not by chance that you are here. Amen. And so we also want to take time just to um, say hello and to our visitors today, we have um, Sister Regina. She's here all the way from Texas. Let's say amen for Sister Regina. Amen. Blessings to you. And we have the young man back here. And, and who invited you? Elder Elise. Oh, wonderful. Okay, God bless you. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. And Akilah. I'm saying it right. Lakila with an L. I'm in, the, I'm in the ballpark. Yes, amen. She brought her grandmother with her today. We're saying happy, um, happy to have you, Mom, with us today. And so God is good. And let's just clap for our visitors. They didn't have to be here. Well, we're moving forward. And after the a sermonic solo, the next voice you will hear today is our pastor, Bishop Charles Nowden. I would ask that everyone would stand. If the Lord never do nothing else for me. Oh, <laughs> 
Father, we thank you on this morning for all of your blessings that you have bestowed upon our life. Give you praise for the sacrificial good that you shared on behalf of each of us, the price that you paid being a debt that we do not owe. And we thank you for it again for the plan of salvation that we all are saved and none should be lost because of you. I come this morning to praise you and to say thank you. I said thank you, Lord. I lift my hands and give you glory and say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Give us a word today. Hallelujah. Speak to our heart. Word of salvation and a yes, word of deliverance, yes, 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 yes. a word of healing thank you, Jesus. for your people. And we thank you in Jesus' name yes, Lord. that people say amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand for you. Would you do that all over the Praise God. And before we take our seats, I want you to do something for me. I, I want you to look around. Would you kind of just do an about face and look around and around to see the you know what an about face and anybody been in the army or the military and about hey! look around go f find somebody that you haven't saw all week and welcome them to this service today if you haven't seen them all week go welcome somebody to this service go and welcome them Tell them how good it is to be here on today. Welcome somebody. Make them feel good. And when you do it, smile. Don't frown. Smile. Amen.
It's nothing like giving God praise. Amen. And when you think of the goodness, when you think, amen, how good he been and where he brought us from, it's easy to give him praise. It's easy to tell him I love you. When you think of the goodness, thank you, Jesus. God bless you. We're so thankful again for each of you. My wife recognized. Amen. I'm a guest, and I just want to recognize all of you. Thank you so much. It's so good to see Mom back there. Amen. Out today, thank you. Delaware, make sure y'all get here. Thank you so much. Amen. Love you. Amen. God is good. I pray that for now, God give us a word that will encourage us. Amen. To take us to another level. I'm not into trying to preach to people to make them jump and dance, but to be able to, they can retain something that they can live by on tomorrow and the next day. Amen. How many know that the enemy is busy? How many know that the devil don't love you? Amen. I don't care what kind of line he got. Amen. He don't love you. And because his agenda is to destroy you and to kill you. That that's why he said all those nice things to you because he wants to lure you in. And then after he lure you in, then he wants to destroy you. And then after he destroy you, he wants to kill you so you can't come back and redeem again and be redeemed or repent. That's why he had to kill you in the midst of your destruction so that you could be lost. Amen. So we know his agenda. I'm so thankful, but before I share a word with you. I just want to uh, go over a couple of the announcements. Uh, we're getting ready for our convention, uh, Southern California 2nd Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction Convocation, amen, which I am the prelay of that meeting. That's my bit, that is my week, my week of convention for the bishop. And uh, we starting out tomorrow, it's not a, a service, but tomorrow, at, at, at uh, I think Mother Rosemary spoke on that, didn't you? Didn't you mention that? I just want to reiterate at 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm asking as many to join us on prayer. And uh, you have to get the, the number for the prayer line. You know, you can do that at home where you at. Get on the phone and be in the prayer. We're praying for miracles and deliverance and blessing in that meeting. Amen. This is led by Mother uh, Pastor Waters. She is the leader of the uh, Mary House of Prayer. Hmm? Now, sent out by text, he said that the, the, the number. So if you don't have it, you know, you can just uh, ask Mother Rosemary or Mother Now, a different one, get that text and send it out by text. So you can get on that prayer line tomorrow at 9 o'clock. We're going to be from 9 to 10. And we're going to be uh, people going all over going to be on prayer praying tomorrow for the convention and for God blessing, okay? And so you can get that information today. If, you, if I'm not making it clear that you get it, don't worry about it. We have time to get it at the, the service. So with, and the next thing we have, the, the service will start, ASHA service will start that next day, which will be Tuesday. And we have flyers for that Tuesday morning, starting Tuesday morning, and that service will go all week long until Sunday evening, the official day. Uh, I'm saying all of that for you to know. Everybody, everybody got to hear it, amen? Because I want you to hear this. Do not come here next Sunday. Sister Terry, don't get no ride over here next Sunday. Yeah, I know, I'm messing with you, okay? Yeah. The church will be closed, amen, next Sunday. There will be no service here next Sunday. But just next Sunday. Next Sunday, don't show up over here. All right. All right. He's very faithful. I don't want just showing up here saying, where's everybody? Yeah. We're going to be in the convocation in San Diego. You know, man. And so uh, uh, I'm looking for you. Since there's no service here, then you got to go there to be there, right? Yeah. That's where your, your bishop going to be in San Diego in the convention next Sunday. So don't, don't show up. Miss it. Don't, don't y'all show up here next Sunday. All right. Thank you. And uh, we'll be in San Diego. We're looking for a great time. I want to get the announcement out. 
Amen. I know many times at the end of our service, we'll be doing our tithes and offering and giving. And I'm going to share this now. Those that listen to us on by our Facebook and Internet or whatever way you're looking at us, that you'll send us today. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, this ministry has been a blessing to you. Amen. You can do so by going to Holy Way at the Gilbert You see the, my name and my church there. And you can be a blessing to us, amen, by give a five, or you can do it by cash out, amen. I think they can put that up on the, on the board so we can see that, amen, if our, our listeners can see that, that are listening to us that are not here. Now, you at Holy Way, when we get there to the offering time on, on this evening after I minister to you, amen, I want you to uh, let the Lord speak to you so you can give your offering for next Sunday and this Sunday because we won't be here. And because the church still have to go on, okay? So y'all can just go ahead and double up for about two Sundays in a row. Amen. I ain't, I ain't got no amens on that one. All right. Amen. So I, I wanted to say this in the beginning so that at the end, amen, you won't get quiet. You know, I don't have to say it at the end, you know what I mean? And then if I preach, you know, and the Lord come in and bless us, we'll leave on a, a happy note. Not, you know what I'm saying, giving for two weeks. May the Lord bless you again. We are so thankful for each of you and for the blessing of the Lord in each of our lives. I want to call your attention to a passage of scripture that I want to share with you, and I pray that it will be a blessing to your life. We're living in some very difficult times, and, and the enemy, and I say this all the time, the enemy is so busy that he don't care how he Amen, of what he can do and how he can do it to be able to destroy what God is doing. God has been good and blessed and everything. But the scripture I want to talk about uh, is from two, two, Matthew, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to read the 18th verse first. And it said, And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brethren, two brethren. One name was Simon, and that was Peter. And his brother was Andrew, and they were fishing, casting a net into the sea and uh, doing the work that God, that they were uh, supposed to be doing, the 22nd verse, that's the 18th verse, that I'm going to read on down, 18, 19, 20, and say, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway, straightway mean right then, they didn't procrastinate but right then straightway they left their net and followed him and going uh, going on from there he saw other two brethren that were James and, and James the son of Zebedee and John his brother these are James and John was the daddy name was Zebedee and they was in the ship with their dad, um, men and their dad. They also were fishermen. And he called them. And they immediately, uh, that right there, straightway, immediately, is the same word, straightway, right then, immediately, right then. They left their ship and their father and follow Jesus. Uh, follow Jesus. Uh, the, the next verse that I want to read, uh, the ninth chapter, you can look over to the ninth chapter, and there's the ninth verse. And as Jesus passed forth from this, he saw a man, and this one, he was not fishing. Now, this man here was kind of more of a, a politician. He was a tax collector, Matthew setting that the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. Hey, that's what he said to Matthew, follow me. And again, he rose and followed him. He, right then, he did the same thing, that he uh, stopped doing what he was doing uh, and followed Jesus. If you look at each of these that he called, there was no procrastination. And they each uh, heed to the call of Jesus and began to follow him. 
at, at the call. Uh, this event occurred after the Jesus temptation, after the, you know Jesus was tempted by Satan, and after fasting for forty days, and uh, uh, and uh, he was tempted by the by the enemy now, the devil, uh, and. In numerous ways, we can see uh, as we read, study the passage of Jesus' temptation, we find out that he was tempted. First of all, he was tempted in his uh, physical body. I know if you fast and you go through and you do some things, it affects you physically. We have to take care of our physical body. Even though you're working for the Lord, I think a lot of times we get confused and we get a little off track because we think because we're doing it for the Lord that we're not going to suffer physically. If I run the church every night and if I run to a meeting all the time and I run and do evangelist work all the time and do not properly take care of myself, it's going to affect my physical body. So Jesus was fasting for 40 days, and because he was Jesus, it didn't mean that Jesus didn't get hungry. Jesus would have been glad to get some bacon and eggs, uh, uh, McDonald's, after 40 days. You know, he, he, his body craved food. He was human. His human body wanted to be fed. And what happened, you know, I mean, uh, the devil tempted him, and, and he tipped him by saying, uh, uh, if thou, would, you know, uh, his spirituality, his relationship, if you be, if you, if you be the son of God, if you all of this that you claim to be, then why don't you uh, turn these stones to bread? Now, it would not have been Nothing wrong with Jesus turning stone to bread. There was no sin in him doing that if he wanted to do that. The wrong would have been that he did it because who told him to do it? Something you do, you don't, it's not wrong, but you're getting it from the wrong person. You don't do, because the devil have an alternate motive, whatever he tell you to do. There's an alternate motive. It's not just doing the act itself. What he tells you to do may not be a sin, but the reason he's telling you is to get you off track another way. Then he also told him that his leadership, he attacked him in his leadership ability. All of this, all of this, I will give you if you worship me. And I say this all the time. You've probably heard me say this many times. How in the world the devil going to give you something that already belongs to you? He, 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 used the wrong, he used the wrong word with Jesus, all of this. Jesus said, I was there when the Father spoke this into existence. Amen. The, me and the Father and the Holy Ghost, we made man. Amen. I am God. I am Godhead. I'm part of it. And then the devil telling him, I'm going to give you what you created. If you wish a man. Why is I'm saying this here? You need to know how to stand your ground and let the devil know he can't have no authority in your life and you're not taking no wishful thoughts or whatever. You're not taking no empty promises. All of this I give you if you wish for me. He got nothing to give you because, amen, he don't own anything on his own. Amen. So, so there's always an alternate motive. Let me, let me tell you this then. Uh, this is a little bit off what I'm saying, but I'll show you how the enemy works. Uh, the man's wife was, was, had an addiction to going shopping. She loved to go. You women know what I'm talking about, go to the shop and that. What was that? Those, those fancy stores, those expensive stores. What's those expensive stores? Mesa Market or Mesa, Mesa, Mesa. You know the one that costs a lot to go into. You know those stores you have to pay to, to go through the gate. And, and, 
and, and his, his, his wife loved to go shopping, and, and he loved his wife. He told her, she said, I'm going. She said, honey, she said, he said, you know, you're really putting me into bad shape. I love you, you know, but you're putting me, in, you're putting me up against the wall. He said, don't, don't shop today. Just go look. She said, I promise you, I ain't buying nothing. I promise you, I won't buy nothing. You've been good to me. You don't put nothing. She said, I ain't buying nothing. I'm just going looking. She said, when I look, it makes me feel good. So she went in the shop, and she looked at this dress, pretty red dress. And the man told us, just try it on. She said, I'm just going to try it on, you know, man. And she tried it on, and she looked at it. She said, it looked good. It looked good and everything. She said, but I can't buy it. I promise my husband I'm not going to buy it. I promise my husband I'm going to buy it. And he said, you know, she turned around and looked at it, and she put it on, and she looked in the mirror. He said, turn around, you know, the salesman friend. Turn around and look at it. She turned around and looked at it, you know what I mean? Everything. And she came home with the dress. He said, I thought I told you not to buy the dress. She said, you told me that you're going to tell the devil to get behind you. And she said, I did. She said, I did. She said, I put the dress on, and I told that devil, get behind me, devil. And when the devil got behind me, the devil told me I looked better from the rear than I did from the front. And she said, I had to buy. See, you can't listen to what the devil tell you. So when she put the dress on, she was ready to take it off, but the devil told her, look in the back. And she said, get behind me, devil. The devil got behind her. He said, wow, you look good. And she bought it. My point is that any time the devil telling you something, any time that you listen to him, he has an attorney motive. And it may not seem bad in the beginning what he's saying, but his motive is bad. Once he gets you to agree with him, once he gets you to do one thing, then he got you to, to go further to the next step. Amen? Amen? Well, I said that for you to laugh at, you know what I mean? Now, the devil had tried Jesus in every aspect of his personality without any success. If you resist him, he will never be able to win. And that's what Jesus did. How did he resist him? He resists him by putting the word on him because he don't, you don't have the strength. I don't have the strength. None of you that are sitting here have the strength to resist him on your own ability. You need the word to resist him, and Jesus used the word to resist him. Remember that. That's why it's important to stay in the word, to read the word, to study the word. Amen. Because the word is the only thing that's going to be able to defeat the enemy. Who are you? He ain't going to listen to you. There's no power in you within yourself, but the word. There's power. Thank God for the power of the word of God. You ought to give God praise for the word. Because if he can't get you, he'll try those that you love. Matthew, the 11th chapter. You kind of walk with me a little bit. Let's look at the, go over to Matthew, the, the 11th chapter. I want to read that real quickly. Amen. Let me find that. Matthew, the 11th chapter. If you can find it, number two, verse number two. Can you find that for me? Matthew 11, chapter number two. It said, now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. You know what that is. And he said to him, are thou that to become? Are thou he that should come? Or do we look for another one? He heard Jesus heard that John had been cast into prison, one that he loved. Another attempt, this is another attempt that the enemy used to lay a stumbling block to keep him from following the call up on his life. And see, when God called you, a man and have auditioned you and place you, a man, to follow him and to place a work upon your life. If he cannot get you individually to go back, 
He will attack those that are close to you to try to deter you and get you off focus. He will put something in your life to draw your attention away from him. And this is what the scripture said, greater is he that was in you than he that is in the world because whatever he brings, there's something greater within you once you accept Christ in your life. There's no excuse. Know who is calling you. Know who called you. Know who died for you. Know who paid the price for you. Understand that this is not your fight alone. This is not your battle. But he already done fought the battle for you. Already paid the price for you. All you have to do is use his name. I'm really trying not to get you happy today, but I'm really trying to get you to understand that you got more going for you than you really think you have. People, I'm so tired of people telling me about what I can't do and, and this I can't do. And I, I know you can't do it. You ain't telling me nothing. That I don't know. I know you can't do it, but you can do But all things you can do within Christ that strengthen you. Now that's the word. So when you use the word, you take, out, you take me out of the equation and put Jesus up front. And when you do that, you can walk in victory. Amen. Jesus is the one who called Peter, Andrew, Matthew, and etc. and all of the disciples. He called all of them. But they didn't call themselves. And there's no way, there's no way they could have taken the persecution, the, the, the abuse, the rebuke, the hardship, amen, the ups and the downs that they experienced had not they have been called by Jesus and know who is the one that had did the calling. Amen. We remember in the first century, there was many, there were many people waiting on the birth of Jesus. And they knew what the law said. They knew, understood the law. And many were claiming to be the Messiah. They had the false pretender saying they are the one. That's why John asked the question when he was in prison. He said, are you the one? that we read about? Are you the one that we talked about? Are you the one that the old prophet prophesied that would come? Are you the one? Because, hey, if you're the one, all I did was preach the gospel, and all I did was just proclaim that you are the, 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 the son of God, and here I am in prison, and you ain't delivered me out of prison. You ain't came in, 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 in to my hearing. You ain't came to my trial. Are you the one, or do we look for another? Have I made a mistake? And Jesus assured him that you have made no mistake. So that was because there was a lot of people at that time waiting for the, the coming of Jesus, the, waiting for the Messiah to come uh, uh, during that time. And, 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 and uh, they were false claiming to be the Messiah who were false prophets and and they sought followers of people that were following them and believing that they were the one and they were proclaiming they the one. And, 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 and the, the, the one that were promised to come and to deliver them from the uh, oppression of the Roman government. And, the, and, and, and there was spiritual hunger uh, there because of the treatment that the Jews were experiencing from the Roman government and they, they were available looking for that deliverance that the old prophet had talked about that Jesus was going to come and set up his kingdom. So a lot of people took the advantage of that and said, I am the one. And they were false religions and cults and magic and trickery to get people. So when John was thrown in prison, John sent a message and said, are you the one? Are you the real? Or do we look for another one? 
But then Paul come along in Corinthians, the 16th chapter, and said, stand fast in the faith. Sometimes when we are facing difficult time, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting out the early century now, getting in your century. We are facing difficult time. We are dealing with hardship. We want to question, did God really call me? Did he really tell me to go here? Did he really call me into ministry? Did he really call me into the pastorship? Did he really call me to do the evangelism? Did God really call me to do the work that I'm doing? Why? We question because of the hardship that we're going through. We question because of the difficult time we are going through. We question because of the opposition, and we question sometimes because of the trickles of the devil. But the word said, stand fast. Stand fast. And I'm paraphrasing here, 1 Corinthians 16, chapter 13, verse. You can look that up, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Stand fast in the faith. The faith that God had gave you, that that you believe when he first told you, amen, you believe him. And I'm going to say it again, 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13. Stand fast in the faith. If God said it, I believe it. And I don't care what the enemy bring, I'm going to stand fast. Stand fast means that I'm unshakable. Stand fast means that I'm not letting the wind blow it away from me. I'm not going to let people take it away from me. I'm not, I don't care if they talk about me, misuse me, mistreat me. I'm going to stand fast in my faith. Oh, thank you, Jesus. With the disciples. There must have been some question within them. How do I know this one who he is calling, that we are following, that open? How do I know that he really is the Christ? Don't, don't be amazed that there's time that you have doubts. Uh, of, 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 of uh, uh, what God had told you. Anybody here, God had told you something and you had doubts? Especially when you're facing difficult time because you think if God said it, everything is supposed to just go smooth, don't you? If, if God told you to go from here to, uh, to, 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 to uh, San Bernardino, and, and you know God said it, but soon you get halfway, you had a flat, then you are, God, do you really tell me? He didn't tell you we ain't going to have no flat. Yeah. And then you didn't put no gas in your car, and then you run out of gas. Oh, God, I don't think you told me I run out of gas. No, it ain't about God. You just didn't have something to stop by the gas station. All right. You know, God don't have to tell you, get in your car, turn the key, stop by the gas station, put your foot on the brake. Don't run into the car. Match the brake. There's a car in front of you. No, you just run into the car. Then you go, God, you told me to go. And then run into the car, but you didn't match on the brakes. You're supposed to run into the car and it had nothing to do with what God told you. You just didn't follow the sense that God gave you. I'm so tired of people blaming God for things that they should not automatically do. God told you to do it, then God said, go make a cake. You ought to, you ought, you ought to know that. Tell me, Dad, no, no, God, you ain't made a cake, then do it. Well, you ain't put no egg in the cake. You ain't put no flour in the cake. You ain't put no meal in the cake. That's why you ain't got no cake. If God told you to make a cake, you ought to get a book and read what goes in the pot to make the cake. Read up on cake making. Get a dictionary on cake making. Look it up on the internet on cake making. Call mama and ask her how to make a cake. You do something. We want God to do everything. And then we blame him. Amen. God called you to ministry. God called you to evangelism. God called you into the work of the work. Then you ought to apply yourself. You ought to study the word so you can do what God called you to do. Get in the word of God. Study the word of God. Spend some time in praying. 
Open your heart and let him speak to you. God call you to the ministry. You, don't be like I did when I was young. I, I, I was a good C average student, basically, you know. No, I'm not going to tell you I was a A, a four point, what is the four point this? And four point that. Yeah. Because I, many times I didn't study and I put the book up on my pillow. Because they told me you put the book on the pillow, you wake up, all the knowledge will get in your head while you sleep. I found out that was a lie. I put the book up on my pillow. When I got up the next morning, I still didn't know nothing. And it didn't get it until I opened the book and started reading it and just sticking up on the pillow ain't going to get it. You put this Bible up on your pillow, you can put it on your, you can buy your Bible, you can put it on the, on the desk, you put it everywhere. But if you don't read it, you ain't going to get nothing to do the work that God called you to do. You're going to have to get in it. Are you with me today? Amen. Hallelujah. But in the midst of all of the false messiahs, all the falsehood, they heard Jesus' voice and they followed him. Amen. They followed him as he called them. And the reason they was able to stand because there is no call like the call of Jesus. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. If he, when Jesus call you, he's going to back it up. There's no call like the call of Jesus. And, and, and in the midst of trials and tribulation, there's no assurance like the call of Jesus. There's a, there's a reason to follow him. Jesus called is like no other call. Right, yeah. Amen. People enjoy and they want to accept the call. They enjoy knowing that, oh, I've been called by Jesus. And, and they accept the call of him, especially when they are making us feel good. There's a good feeling knowing that, yes, he called me. I belong to him. But therefore, all calls are not from the Lord. Some of them is your imagination. Or some of them are people around you that think they're telling you this. But Jesus declared in John 10 and 3, he said, his sheep hear his voice and they will follow him and he will give them eternal life. And what I mean about that, when you are his sheep, when you belong to him, amen, you will know his voice. You know what God is saying to you. Amen. You know when God calling you. And then when the devil comes in and try to wipe it out and tell you it's not God, you know that what God has done for you. And one thing that the old folk can testify, they say, I know what God has done for me. I know that the doctor couldn't do it. I know that you couldn't do it. I know whatever. That, I tried everything, but I know what God has done for me. And when they start saying that, they start praising God and getting God the glory. And there's a joy that come down inside of them. And they said, this thing that down inside of me, I can't help myself. And that's what Jeremiah said, said, I can't help but to preach the gospel of God. I, I can't help myself because it's like fire shut up in my bone. It's down inside of me. It's not something I can rub on and rub off and wash off, but it's down inside of me. Telling me to go ahead. I think we need some go ahead down inside of us. In the, midst, in, the, in, the, in the midst of battles, in the midst of hard time, and in the midst of trials and tribulation, we need some go ahead down inside. Something down inside of me telling me to go ahead. How many know that the Holy Ghost will tell you to go ahead? It'll keep you going. Tell them thank you. Tell them thank you. Ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, it must be. Say, I'm going through and, and people is against me and etc. And all of the opposition. And, and let me just say this, and this is not even on my note. Just because the Lord has called you into a work doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. Can y'all believe that? 
just because you know who called you and they call you into work, it doesn't mean that they're going to be smooth all the time. Really, I, I think in my own imagination, amen, the difficult time reassure me that it is God because the devil don't want you to get there. And, 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 and then sometimes the difficult time prepare us for what's ahead of us. They prepare us, amen, for what's ahead of us. And we can accept that. We must be careful to hear the voice of God because the, when he speaks and you respond to him, it will affect the rest of your life. When you respond to him, it will affect you the rest of your life. It means you are willing to, what is, what, what, why would it, how would it affect the rest of your life? It means that you are willing to sacrifice your ways. You have to sacrifice your way because man has a will and God has a will. And, and, and just because you get saved doesn't mean that you don't have your own will because the will of man is to satisfy man, the flesh. You get the Holy Ghost, amen, you still have fleshly desires. You know, there, 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 there's a battle there. There's there two, two walls there that you, you see, you, you, you desire. I mean, you go to the restaurant and the steak look good. You ate one steak and you look at it, there's another one there. Now you want a poke chop and, and then you see another steak and then you want another steak. You want to, you know, by the time you get through, you can't get up because you need three or four T-bone and four flavor of steak. That, that's that flesh. That's flesh. That's not, you know, that's not meeting the need. That being, that being greedy. And now, now, now you're sick. You got to go to the doctor. So, 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 what it means, if I can make this clear to you, uh, your life has to change because we have to submit our ways to God's ways. And it's, it says that uh, you are willing to sacrifice your ways. That means I have to deny self, amen, to a heed to God's way and to yield to what he want me to do. That is a sacrifice. And we cannot keep doing the same thing and going the same places and acting the same way that we were doing before we committed to Christ. We cannot stay in the same place and answer once you answer the call to Christ upon your life and submit your life to him. You see, people, people many times, God deliver them. They come to church and they get in the prayer line and, 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 and then God deliver them. And I declare that. I'm not saying they didn't get it. They, they, they accept Christ in their life and they, they cry and they yield to God. But what happens, they go right back into the same environment. And they go right back to the same. If God deliver you out of that, you need to not go back the same way. When Jesus left, uh, 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 what is it, the Bethlehem there, right? They went back another way. Uh, they, they went into Egypt because the, the enemy was out to destroy him. They were looking for him. And so the enemy is not going to give up on you. You have to understand the devil, church. I mean, the devil ain't going to say he went to church and you got saved, you got delivered. So I'm, I'm going to leave him alone. Every conversation I ever had with the devil, he ain't never said, I'm going to leave you alone. He always got another way to try to lure you in. You, you, now, if, you, if, the, if the devil told you he's going to leave you alone, you know, y'all bless. I haven't got there yet. He ain't going to leave you alone. So you have to sometimes avoid, go around him, go another way. If you know he dare, you know, go another way. Let, let the aggressor be upon him. Don't put yourself in his, into his arm way. You cannot keep doing the same thing that you were doing. You cannot hang around the same people. You cannot go at the same place. You cannot keep doing the same thing and thank God blessing going to be up on your life. 
I don't know if I clear. I can make that any clearer to you. When you when you have been called by Him, there have to be a change. When Jesus commanded Peter to follow Him, and I think this is why I read that. When Jesus commanded Peter to follow Him, Peter didn't say, "Wait till I get enough fish." I got you, Jesus. I understand your call. I understand you want me to do, but just hold up one minute. I'm not through fishing. But he said, what, right then? I think the Bible used straightway or something. You read it. We read it a few minutes. Right then and there. And then it, it said, right then, Matthew. Right then, James and John the Zebedee boy. Right then, they did not say, later, I'll kiss you later, Jesus. I believe you, I understand you, but I'll kiss you later. Right then. Straightway, that means straightway, that is then, right then. They did it then. What we are willing to give up as we follow him, show, what does it do? By you giving up something, it shows how deeply we are willing to be involved with him. You got to give up something to follow Jesus. How many know that? Amen. I always talk about my wife. Y'all know that, don't you? How many know I always talk about my wife? Well, Cecilia, when I call Cecilia, hello, Cecilia, marry me. Yes, I will. She got to give up, Johnny. Willie Joe, oh, I, don't, I shouldn't say Willie Joe, that's just a brother, brother. Johnny, Tommy, Tommy Joe, Jim Doe, whatever his name. I'm making up some names so these are not real people. She got to give them up. Why? Why? Because somebody said because I called her. I like that the way you said that. She, when I called, she belonged to me. And when Jesus called you and you said, yes, you belong to him, there's something you can't take along with you. You got to let it go. Because you become a new creature. You got a new commander. You got a new person. You got to let it go. And just as sure as she followed me on Sunday and on Monday she out with Johnny Joe, Tubby Lee, something going to break down. It's not going to work. And that's what happened with many of our commitment to Christ and our spiritual life. We are not totally committed. Because I don't see no shortness in Christ. I don't see no shortcoming in God. I believe if God said it, he would do it. Amen. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. And if it's not working, it's not God's fault, it's our fault. Quit trying to put the blame on God. I, 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 I say many times, we, we are so caught up in the Adam syndrome. I said this to my wife on the way to church. As the people are so caught up in the Adam syndrome, God called Adam and said, Adam, you the man. I put you here. Amen. I, I, I gave you authority. Amen. I gave you the ability to name all of the Adam. Adam, Adam named them. And, 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 and I, I gave you the ability, amen, to be in charge of my creation. And, 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 and you can have whatever you want. And Adam you know, went to God. And, you know, you know, I, mean, I got to bring it up to the daytime. Adam texts God. You know, y'all know about texting, don't you? I don't text God and say, hey, God, everybody got somebody of me except me. The monkey got somebody. Even, even the goats got somebody. The alligator got somebody. The, the, the elephant got somebody. I was looking the other day and the turtles, they were snipping up on each other. I ain't got nobody looking like me. God said, okay. Gave him some pills, put him to sleep, took a rib, made him a woman. Best thing he ever saw. Good Lord Almighty. Woo! 
Adam felt like I did when I saw Cecilia. Finest thing I ever saw. Woo! Lord have mercy. I got that. I want that. He got her, took her to the altar, got some flowers, had a wedding. Amen. God married her. And then he disobeyed God. Out of all God did for him, how good God did, been to him, how God blessed him, he disobeyed God. And God, all God wanted him to do to just confess up and admit what he did. You know what he did? Adam, God, God, God said, Adam, what happened, man? I called you the other day, you wouldn't answer. I, I, I text you, you wouldn't text me back. I, I, you wouldn't answer your telephone. I, I've been trying to reach you. Uh, we've been talking all this time. What happened, Adam? And the first thing he thought, how that, he put the blame on God. That, that woman you gave me. He didn't say that woman that I emailed you and asked you for. That woman you gave me, she the fault. That woman fault. I'm so tired of people trying to fault everybody else for our downfall. It's time to stand up and be men and women of God and take the responsibility and say, it's me, oh God. It's not somebody else. Amen. I'm the one that failed. I'm the one that messed up. I'm the one that have come short. I'm the one. And God will forgive you, and God will bless you, and God will heal you, but you first got to admit, amen, that I am, if you confess your fault one to another. He'll forgive you. But most of the time, we can't move forward because we're blaming everybody else for our fault. Everybody is wrong except me. Thank you. Everybody's wrong. I'm the only one that ever right. You got to give up something to follow him. And I declare if we give up ourselves, which is our worst enemy, we give up ourselves and quit blaming other folk, God will come in and he will heal the land. Hallelujah. You got to sacrifice. That means pressing a friend. How many know friends will hold you back? Because Jesus required a complete and total surrender to his will. Christ is either Lord of all. I want you to get this. He has to be Lord of all. Or he is not Lord at all. He got to be Lord of all of your life. That means he has to be first. Uh, he's not Lord at all of your life. Again, this is personal between you and God. It's not about other people. This is personal. You can't do it because you see somebody else doing it. Because you do it because somebody else do it, you, somebody else going to stop you. If you come to him because of somebody else and it's not personal, when the other person falls, they're going to stop you. If so many people fall because they don't see other people fall, that they believed in and they thought that was righteous and they found out that we, we may be dealing with things that you're seeing now. You thought people were high up and then you're disappointed because you found out that they have frauds in their life and they're not perfect. And then it has a hinder to you. But this thing has to be personal to you. It's not about anybody else. You got to know what God means to you. And you have to know your life, amen, that you have surrendered to him. And if you use it personal and you know it personal, amen, in the midst of all the things that take place in the world, amen, from the government all the way down to the local, whatever happened with people, you see people that have walked in this life that you thought was there, you found out they wasn't there, you'll still be able to stand because your relationship is with Christ. Thank you, Jesus. 
the disciples heard the voice, the power, the anointing. They heard the voice of Jesus. And the Bible said they left what they was doing. The Greek word for left means they abandoned. They abandoned what they were doing to follow Jesus. Why? Because Jesus, what Jesus was summoning them to do was urgent business. It was more important than what they were doing. Somebody said, well, making a living and fishing, that was the occupation and all. That was important. But Jesus was going to put them in a position that they can rely upon him and they still were going to be provided through him. They just had a different outlook or resource that he was going to trust him for their, amen, their taking and their lifestyle. If you answer his call, if you obey him and, 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 and deny self and abandon self-will and give your will over to the Lord and take up his cross and follow him, I promise you he will never forsake you nor leave you. I promise you that. But it has to be totally committed. I'm almost finished. Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse 19 to 20. Use the word immediately or steadfast. They left what they were doing to follow Jesus. Lay your hand on yourself, say, I got to leave what I'm doing to follow Jesus. There was no delay. And the reason there was no delay because with God, business that he called you to is not something that you can procrastinate on. It is urgent business. Our generation is often accused of being in a hurry right now. We live in a generation that everything has to be did right now. They want it, they want it right now. They, they, they got uh, no wait line. You even go to McDonald's that you can order before you get there. And when you get there, you just pick it up and keep running. So you don't have to wait for nothing no more. You can eat, eat right now, eat in a hurry. And don't even have to go to work no more. You can, you can work at home. How many of y'all work at home on the computer? Let's see, they got some, uh, got some. How many of y'all, tell, tell me how many of y'all work at home? And, you know, got one, I see one. And, uh, don't have to get in your car. See, I had two. I usually have to get in my car and drive and buy gas and go to work. Now you just get up in the morning and go in the, go in the office and work at home. Everything is right now. You can do it right now. We live, that is the generation we live. I'm not kicking that, but I'm just saying, just showing you the chain that we are in. Everything is, is right there for us that we can do it. You go, I think, I'm, I'm trying to think of all these things. Uh, the, the telephone is right now. You can just get in touch with people right now. So many things to just get it right now. Get it right now, in a hurry. And we live in that, that lifestyle now. When it comes to the things of God, uh, the work of God, the church work, the, the calling of God, the ministry of God, there seems to be a procrastination in our life. We want to kind of put it on the, you know, on the, on the back burner. We, the soul, some souls have what you call the the eye that you cook on, and then they have another one back there called the warmer. You know, where you get put stuff on there and set it all night, just warm it up. You know, it don't get to, so, you know, you can kind of procrastinate. They want to put God back on the, on the warmer eye, not on the cooking right now. We want to warm him up, yeah. have him in the pot, so when we need him, we get him. But, yeah. but if we don't need him, we'll leave him there until to, to trouble comes, then we'll pull him out. Amen. But we, we, that be procrastination. Look what, look what, look what Paul said in, in Colossians. Follow with me for a minute. Turn to Colossians, the sixth chapter, and I'm not going to read it all. 
and, and, and look at Colossians, the sixth chapter. As you have, he said, as you have received Christ, so walk ye in him. And then he, he said a few other words, but he said, rooted and built up in him. As he called you, as you are in Christ, how many here that is in Christ, that accepted Christ as your personal savior, as your life? And, and, and this, this, this is this is the word. Now, as you, as you have received him, have you received Christ? Yes. Okay. If that's a yes. So now walk you in him. Walk in him. What do you mean? You cannot walk in your own ways. You cannot do your own thing. You cannot be what you want to be talking about. I'm me. God made me this way. And that's me. I'm, this, this, is, this is just me. I hear that all the time. That's just me. Well, if it's just you, it ain't about Christ. Y'all hear that all the time. That's just me. I hear saints say, that's me. And, I, and if you mess with me, that's me. I'm just going to tell them like it is. I just knock them down and, and keep on praying. Tell about me. Then Christ is not in that. But look at the word. Forget about what I'm saying. Look at Colossians. As you have received Christ, so walk in him. And there's some more to that. I'm not reading all. He said, but walk in him. And then if you walk in him, you'll be rooted. Rooted. Rooted means that you got some roots in your life. That means that every little wind and every little thing ain't going to blow you up. When you root it, every time somebody say something to you, every time somebody look at you, every time somebody says something you don't like, you can get along with somebody. You can stand something. If you root it, and the reason that you can't, because you got no roots. And the reason you got no roots, because, amen, you have not walked with him. You walk with him long enough, you're going to get some roots. People got to get saved every Sunday. Every Sunday got to get saved all over. Can't take nothing. I will not stand here and promise you that you don't have no bad time. And I ain't going to promise you that I got the devil locked up in prison. He ain't going to be at you. No, he ain't locked up. Might be waiting at you before you get home. Might wait at you before you get out this door here. I don't have no authority to keep the devil away from you. But I do know that greater is he that will be in you than he that is in the world. I know that. And if you walk with him, you can walk in victory. And if you walk in him, you'll be rooted and grounded and built up in him. Somebody say, everybody here grow. Isn't it good to grow in the Lord? If, if I go to the gym everybody, every day, somebody said, look at him growing, man. Look at all those muscles he got. But wouldn't it be good if you could look at me spiritual and see that I'm growing in the Lord, that I can take something, amen, people can talk about me and I don't quit, amen, people can misuse me and I can still stay there. Wouldn't it be good if you can see the growth in me, that I can love those that don't love me and love those that misuse me? Wouldn't it be good if people can see that I am growing in the Lord? You got people been saved for years and they still wear pampers. They still wear, Mother, Mother Clark, a wig almost fell off when I said that. They still wear spiritual pampers. When they gonna start wearing some spiritual suits and, and, and spiritual, they still babies in the Lord, been saved all of this time and can't take nothing. They can't, even, they can't even eat a steak. They still on spiritual simulac. Been saved all of the years. And every Sunday you got to give them a bottle. Sucking a bottle so they can make it. When you going to eat a pork chop? When you going to eat some ribs? I mean, some real that ain't cooked that good. You have to tear it off the bone. <laughs> you have to let them know who in charge. You ever get that meat ain't the kind of tough? You have to let that meat know who in charge. 
You have to bite it and have to chew it and you have to pull it off. It, it, ain't, it ain't tender, but you, you hungry and you work with it. I'm hungry and I'm gonna work with this thing. It ain't gonna come easy, but I'm gonna hold on. How long you been saved? 20 years. But they, they looked at me funny. Go get them a Similac. Go get their baller. Come on, sister. Suck the baller. Jesus loves you. I'm going to straighten it out for you. I know they hurt your feeling. You okay? I okay today. But don't throw that baller away. I would need it next Sunday. You better keep a whole lot of symbols that because if they don't walk with him and they don't grow with him, they're going to keep needing that bala every time the devil mess with them. They're going to need the same bala. They will not be able to teach a class. They will not be able to do an evangelist work. They will not be able to grow. They will not be able to lead anybody to Christ. All they do all to do is stay in the baby stage the rest of their life. This is not a dancing message today. I'm sorry y'all want me to dance here. Yeah, I mean, you know, who, you know, hold on, hold on. No, that, this, this is not what that's about. I want you to get off from Similac. Get off from baby milk and grow so we can be able to do the work of ministry. Some people never grew up. To accept Christ in your life is not a, remember this, this is important, I want to tell you. When you accept Christ in your life, it's not a, it's not, said not for me. It's not a reform. It's not about reform. It's not an extension of your old life. It's not something built up off of your own. But when you accept Christ in your life, it is a new, it is an extension. A, 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 it is in an entirely new beginning. It's not something he patched up and fixed up and took an old and add something on and refinish it. No, no. Christ bring an entirely new beginning into your life, and it's about change. Old things. What did the Bible say? Old things are what? Let me, let me paraphrase this and see can you catch me. Old things are patched up. They tell me you can't even patch up old plumbing. Is that right? Any men that didn't know about that? You try to patch up old plumbing, it busts again somewhere here. You can't even patch up old plumbing. Why do you think the Lord going to patch you up with your old self? All them old ways. You put a patch on, on a liar, that lie going to seep through. That patch going to give through if things get rough. You put a patch on a fornicator, an adulterer, and, 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 and you see something look good to you, it going to seep through. You, you put a patch on a thief, and he said, oh, I'm okay. I ain't stealing no more. Don't leave your money there and, and walk away. That temptation going to get him. He going, well, I ain't going to get but a couple of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. See, you can't patch this up. So when Jesus come in your life, and you accept him as your personal Savior, he don't patch you up. He don't extend on the old and put the extension on the old, but he make all things new. Any man be in Christ, he is an old creature recreated, right? Somebody didn't get it. He's not an old creature. I did that intentionally. He become a new creature. Old things are where? And behold, all things. You become an entirely new beginning in Christ which is about change. And the purpose of the gospel is to bring our character 
into conformity to the character of Jesus. In other words, what, what do you mean when I say that? I'm going to say it again. The purpose of the gospel is to bring our character into conformity to the character of Jesus. So let me say that in two words. See me, you see Jesus. The way I act is the way Jesus acts. The way I love is the way Jesus loves. The way I treat you is the way Jesus treats you. So I represent Jesus through my character. So you can't, I cannot represent Jesus on Sunday morning standing here and then Monday you see another person of me. It don't work. I'm supposed to represent him on Monday just like I do standing here on Sunday. Amen. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is coming quickly. We're living in a day where there's a dying world. Souls are being lost. Souls need to be saved. The sick need to be healed. Life and family life need to be mended. The only help, lift your hand with me and say this with me, say the only help, the only help for this world, amen, is to yield to the calling of Jesus and follow him. Would you stand? I'm finished. Would you stand with me? We can talk all day about the problem of this world, the hurt, the abuse, the work of Satan. I can stay here all day and still would not cover it all of it. But I will say this, the only help for us today is the call of Jesus on our life and to yield to what God has called us to do. I thank God for him. And I'm praising God for your life, my prayer is that the Lord will intervene into your life, your family life, husband and wives, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers. I think that we still have the power to make a difference. But our help is not in the, in, in, in the political world, it's not in the social world, but our help is in the world of Christ and when we uh, our national church is, is theme is trying to push us back to that we'll go back to holiness and, and I think when we go back and really thought embracing holiness as we were talking about really beginning we're going to see some changes in our life but if we're trying to change and continue to doing the thing that we're doing we're not going to get any changes I don't care how you preach I don't care what you do there has to be some change in what we're doing the old, older church used to tell us when we came to church, they said, you, you got to change. You got to stop doing this. You don't catch that no more. You got to stop. Yeah, you got you to stop shacking. You got to stop lying. Yeah, you, you know, you got you to stop drinking the white lightning and, and Johnny Walker. They, they used to tell us that, you know, right in the church. You have to stop. You know, yeah, you have to stop dipping snuff. They don't dip snuff no more. You know what I mean? But they said, you have to stop. You, all things they felt that pull you away from God, that you got to stop it. And, and, and that was up front. And because we taught that, God blessed us. And, and now we saying that, you know, that so many, you hear so many things that it ain't no harm. That ain't no harm to pull us away spiritually from God. And then have it hurt it, our, amen, our spirituality. And it affect our homes, it affect our community. It will affect our country at large. Amen. I want to pray. Amen. You want God to move you into that place that you will be totally surrendered to him and believe in God for a change. If you're not satisfied with what's going on in your life now and you need to change your life, I want you to make your way to the altar. 
Amen. Don't wait and see if anybody will come. Just act like when God calls you and you're going to move. You're waiting for somebody else to come. You might not get there. Maybe. Nobody else might not want anything. But if, you, if you're not satisfied with what's going on right now and you want God to do something for you spiritually, would you come to the altar right now? I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. Just walk to the altar. Yeah. You have a need. You need God to do for you personal for your life what you need God to do for you Lord I'm not really satisfied with everything that happened with me but I want more from you I want you to do I need a miracle I need you to work something for my my family life I need a miracle there amen and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to trust you that you will do it for me amen but if you said, Lord, I'm satisfied with what I am. I don't need nothing else. I'm just a happy. I ain't asking you for nothing else. Don't do nothing else for me. I'm satisfied. Well, you stay where you at. Amen. But if you're not satisfied, you need God to do something else for you. Amen. Be willing to walk to the altar and say, as an act of faith. As an act of faith and believe God. I believe God works miracles. I believe he still works miracles. I believe that he's a healer. Amen. I believe that he will work for our young people. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know what you need. You don't have to tell nobody else. You know what you're seeking God for. You know what you've been asking him for for a long time. You know your desire. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God said this day, this day, I'm here for you. Oh, thank you. This day, this day. I said, this day, I'm here for you. I come for you. So you have to trust him. If you don't believe him, nothing's going to happen for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Sing that little song for me. I love the Lord today because for me every special way. Love you, I love you, I love the Lord today. Oh yes. Come on, sing it for me, sing it for me. thank you right now these that are standing you know they desire I believe a miracle in their life some are standing because of the emptiness in their life the hurt and the pain some are standing on behalf of children and grandchildren that are gone astray. Some are standing today because of their health problems. They need a healing in their life. Some are standing today because there's a war going on within their flesh. And the devil keep attacking them. And they're wondering why. Why, Lord? Some are standing because they want answers. I don't understand. Why, Lord? I know there's something better than what I'm dealing with. How long, Lord? I've been asking you, I've been seeking you, but how long? God said 
say to you, I speak a word of prophecy to you. And God is saying, not long. This is your time. God said, this is your time. The harvest is right. This is your time to receive the harvest. But you've been waiting on. This is your time. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I receive it. Come on, lift your hand and say, I receive it. The devil is a lie. I receive it right now. I embrace it right now. In the name of Jesus. Glory! My children is well. My sons and daughters heal. Oh, glory. My family is here. My relationship is here. My finance is here. My body is here. This is your time. You ought to give God some praise and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. It's well. I say it's well right now. In the name of Jesus. Say yes. Oh, glory. Woo. Give up, 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 it could have done something that I see. Glory, 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 glory. Stretch out your mighty hand. Hey! Hey! Woo! Glory! Victory is mine. I feel the victory. I said victory is on the way. Oh, glory! Oh, Lord! Oh, Lord! to God. Thank you. I said tell him thank you. Tell the Lord 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 thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Good Lord. Good Lord. Of Jesus, it is well. We give you praise. Amen. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God.
each of you today. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Again, all of you that are fathers today, uh, happy Father Day to you. Amen. Happy Father Day. We want to. Amen. Uh, I want to receive our offering and our tithes at this time. Amen. And don't forget, we won't be here next Sunday. So do me a favor, lift your hands up and close your eyes. And until the Lord says, speak to me now for next Sunday too. All right, you can open. That's the prayer. Amen. I'm finished with the prayer. And that means that if you, the Lord, speak to you to tell you to be a blessing. Amen. Also for next Sunday, we won't be here. Amen. And uh, I think that will be good if you thought about it. This is your church. Amen. You know, to give something for this Sunday and next Sunday. We certainly appreciate it. We're not. Our membership is not so big that we can just kind of act like we don't need the finance. We need the finance. And we don't always just be talking about finance all the time. But, hey man, it's good to let you know that if you want to be a blessing to, uh, to the ministry that give something for next Sunday. We certainly appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for our young man, Andre Lebron. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, each of you that are here today. Thank you so much. Hey Amen. Would you stand and just come on and be a blessing to the to the offer? You give it by phone. Use an envelope, you know, and put give a file in there. Uh, I put a cash app, whatever you give it. But everybody come. Hey Amen. You can take it from here. Thank you.